okay? Ramones, Talking Heads, CBGBs, back in the day, what was it like? It was awful, no. It was, <laughs> it was absolutely fantastic. It was, uh, it was like a family. First of all, in the beginning, it was, the place was like a really cozy place with a pool table and a little library at the end with a cozy couch. And everybody was really got along, and uh, it was a great time. It was like a sort of like a family type thing. Anybody else at CBGBs at the time? Yeah. Um, in fact, the Ramones, I think, were the first band I saw perform at CBGBs, and it was pretty awesome. It was uh, in, uh, I think, October of 1974. So it would have been one of your early shows. Am I right? Yeah, it was about 11. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the CBGB's was like an incubator for for all of the bands that were there, and some of the bands really blossomed. And and uh, and uh, fortunately, the Ramones and the Talking Heads were among those. Okay. Tina. Oh, I think that was very well said, Chris. Okay. Absolutely, we were so pleased to be. Um, playing with the Ramones, to find ourselves playing with the Ramones, our first shows at CBGB's, and I think the story goes that Johnny Ramone said, oh, they're really terrible. It's okay. Let them open for us. <laughs> that's, that's the story from Danny Fields, but no, I don't think it's true at all. I no, think that it was, just, it was just happen to happen, and we were so fortunate because we found this perfect band that we could play with. We were weird. They were weird. They were awesome. We were totally different, and we never wanted to follow them because they were so much louder. So, <laughs> and, and they had the greatest lights. They had this amazing designer, Arturo Vega. They had an amazing uh, sound man who also doubled as tour manager, Monty Melnick, who was accepting tonight. And we, we had a blast. We went our first tour of Europe was with you guys in 1977. It was Queen's Jubilee. It was her 25th anniversary. The Sex Pistols had just been banned from everywhere. But we got to meet them. We got to see The Clash play. You remember that? We went to Stonehenge. <laughs> it, was, it was unbelievable. See the Chibis goes to Stonehenge. So, well, now it, it braids the question to me after hearing everyone talk about the old days. CJ, you're from the last incarnation of the Ramones. Yeah, but we got you're to still play part with of the family. Too. Tell us about it. Yeah, I actually got, in fact, got to play on my first U.S. tour um, with Chris and Tina. Um, so that kind of just continued the whole thing for them and for me. But it was, um, I was really lucky. I went from being in jail to five weeks later playing my first show with the Ramones in in Leicester, England. So my story is. <laughs> Beyond, beyond the pale, yeah. beyond the pale, but it, <laughs> but it was right, right. But uh, it was it was incredible. Joey, you know, Joey was. I became great friends with Joey, and and Mark and I were like the clowns. And uh, but Johnny was kind of like my teacher and my mentor. I kind of followed him. He was very militaristic, and I was just coming out of uh, the Marine Corps, and uh, it was a custom-made fit for me. It really uh, turned my life around in a big way. Okay. And Dee Dee loved what you did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The whole band I, I, in fact, I actually played in a band with Dee Dee for a little while also. So to date, the only Ramon I have not played with is Richie. And I offered to play with him, but he turned me down. So hopefully before I die, I'll get to play with Richie, and then I could say I played with all the Ramones. There you go. Well, Excellent. listen, nobody's going to walk away until I talk to everybody, so just wait. Carmine, you are here today representing Marky. Yes. Say a little something from Marky here before you, we get everybody off the, the well, path here. Well, I, I was saying to Tommy, I said, these guys had so much en energy in there. Tempos are so fast. Yeah, you know, for a drummer, that, that is rough playing every song <laughs> up there like that, you know. And uh, when Marky came to see me at the, uh, at the gig I did here a couple of uh, weeks ago, he was sitting down and he was playing on one of the drum sets. And his right hand was going, chi -chi 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 -chi. and it was like, I said, man, that is a fast right hand, dude. He goes, yeah, I know. I said, man, that's from playing all those fast tempos all the time, right? He said, yeah. But um, I'm glad to be here for Marcus. He's a, he's a great dude. I really love him. 
And, uh, and just for the record, that style as it was invented by Tommy. Yeah. Tommy yeah. There you go. Yeah. That's Original what I said. Original member of the band right That's here. That's what I said. One how did the, you do that? I saw four. the videos. I said, how'd you do that, man? There you go. Now we got Mickey standing back just here. Just a little story about uh, going back to the CBGB's thing. I, I, met, I met Tommy and Johnny when I was 14 years old. They had a band called Tangerine Puppets. And they used to rehearse in my friend's basement where the dog used to, uh, they used to keep the dog down there and the dog used to crap down there a lot. And then we went to CBGB's and there was a lot of dog crap and wood paneling. And I walked in there and said, well, I feel right at home. So <laughs> just a little aside about the, the early days at CBGB's, it was, uh, it was, it was like home. And um, I just couldn't be more proud of these guys who... Uh, I can't believe how far they took this thing and um, uh, and how far my brother took his, what he, his talents, what he was able to do, what he, what he was able to contribute to the uh, to the whole uh, genre of punk rock. And thank you very much. There you go, Monty. How did you stay sane through all of this? <laughs> who says He's I'm? Not. Who says I'm sane? <laughs> I know. Made sure he wasn't. It's just an honor. I mean, we all grew up in Forest Hills, the original group. Tommy, I was, I went to junior high school with Tommy, and high, Forest Hills High School with Tommy, and the, all the Ramones were from from Forest Hills, Queens, and Queens was a big influence on all our lives, and it's just an honor to be here at the, the Long Island Music Hall of Fame. People don't realize that Queens is part of Long Island, and it's just great to be here. Okay, I have one more question I have to ask before I let, I let everyone go, and it goes to you two. What is that? 1988 or 89 in February, I'm at the Universal Amphitheater at this tribute to Roy Orbison, oh. and I see this band listed on the bill as the Shrunken Heads. Right. 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 <laughs> Tell me a little bit about well, your one-off well, performance. We, we were able to get all the members of the Talking Heads except, <coughs> except for David Byrne. And, and uh, so we just did this little thing because, you know, Barbara Orbison asked us to, and it was such a wonderful thing. And I was also part of the Femme Fatales, which was put together by Bonnie Raitt. Okay. And Katie Lang was part of it, and Emmy Lou Harris, and a great number of amazing women. And we got to, we got to uh, also be part of the tribute and have an all-woman band. And so I, so we did this, and it was an awful lot of fun. And we thought, well, you know. Let's always have a sense of humor, you know, and we and we had a great time. That was a, a marvelous occasion. Roy Orbison was a big, big inspiration in our lives. Wow, that's great. I appreciate everybody coming out once again. From the Ramones, original member Tommy Ramone. There you go, Tommy. Accepting for Marky Carmine Apiece, Road Manager Monty Melnick, C.J. Ramone. Joey's brother Mickey, and from the Tom Tom Club, Talking Heads and Shrunken Heads, Chris and Tina. Thank you very much for joining us. Yeah.